Welcome back to Social Media for Your Business Online. This is Victor Campos. So for this week's work, we're going to look at the biggest social network of all, Facebook. It has about 1.8 billion users. That's billion with a B, not million. So lots of people use Facebook. Lots and lots and lots of people use Facebook, meaning also lots of businesses use Facebook. So the way we'll use Facebook is, of course, for business. We need to have a business account in order to reach customers. The first stumbling block that you may have is if you set up Facebook for the first time from the Facebook.com home screen, you may think that you need to set up your business name listed in these boxes and such. You may think, well, I've got Victor's Bakery, so I'm going to fill in Victor's Bakery, put in an email, info at Victor's Bakery, whatever. No, you don't do this. This is to set up Facebook as a person, not as a business. Facebook wants a person to use a personal profile and a business to use a business page. So there's a couple of ways to do it. One is at the bottom here, you have create a page for a celebrity brand, band, or business. This is one way to do it. The other way is to add a page to an existing personal page. Now the terminology sometimes is going to be awkward. Personal profile and business page. And I'll probably confuse them up a little bit once in a while too. But for personal, we've got a profile, and for business, we've got a page. So either way, you can go directly to create a page, or you can attach one to an existing personal profile. I would recommend to attach a page to an existing profile. That is, add one or more business pages to your personal profile. Now, don't worry that you, the person, are then creating your business page. They won't, it won't be visible that you, the person, have created or manage the business page. And it's just easier to keep track of everything if it's in one account. So let me tell you a real world scenario. I personally have my own Facebook account, Victor Campos. And from here, I then created business pages for the various clients that my company does social media for. So Victor Campos never shows up in any of the content of the various clients that I help manage. So that's the way I'm going to show you to set it up. up on top of your personal profile, we're going to add a business profile. You may simply want to go directly to create a page without having a personal one first, and that's fine. And what I would say about that is you can create the personal one if you don't have a personal profile on Facebook and never use it. It's just that it's a login. It's one single login that makes it easier to manage multiple Facebook pages. So thinking about it in those terms, in my case, because I have clients, I would create multiple business pages. But for yourself that has one business, you might still think about creating different Facebook pages for different purposes of your business. The main Facebook page of your business plus, let's say, a contest page for your business, just to keep things separate. You can do that by linking them all together, all of these business pages, to one personal profile. So I'm going to sign in with my personal email address of my personal Facebook. Once you sign in, you will see the content of your personal account. We then need to either add to your personal profile a page, or we need to go off to manage it. So on the top right corner of Facebook, there's a little black triangle. I'm sure it has an official name. You can click that little black triangle up on the blue bar, the Facebook bar. You get a drop down with various options, such as the logout option and all of that. And in my case, because I manage several business pages, 
it lists here your pages and I can switch between these three and I manage more than one. So I can go to see more or manage pages. Briefly, if I go to manage pages, again, these are the different businesses that I help manage. Well, if you don't have a page set up already, we have the option here. Create page. So on top of your existing personal profile is where I would recommend to add a business page. And that's the process I'll go through next. It's pretty straightforward. It would be the same process as if I had gone directly from the home page to this screen. The first task here is to figure out what kind of business you're going to put on Facebook first. You've got local business, company, brand, cause, etc. The differences are that in local business, it requires a physical location address. The fictional Victor's Bakery is on 123 Main Street. So I would put in that address that I can claim the location and then it gets started. Well, if I have Victor's Web Design, which is a virtual company that doesn't have a real location, I would click the company, organization, or institution. I can do brand or product as well. Product, obviously, is that I am creating a Facebook page for, let's say, one of the amazing cupcakes that I sell. Brand, brand sort of bleeds into company, I would say, because Victor's Bakery is a brand, and it's also a company, and it's also a local business. So there's no wrong answer here, except that the local business is about a physical location. These others about an artist or public figure and such, well, that's pretty obvious. Regarding entertainment, again, if you are, let's say, a band, I might want to go into entertainment because I could fit into that category. Causes and communities, and they've got their own spot. For Victor's Bakery, I'm going to choose a company because I don't want to put a physical location for this example. Category, there's a lot of them to choose from. I'm going to go with food and beverage. And then the company name, Victor's Bakery. This name that I'm typing here is not unique. If you saw the Twitter video, I talked there about how you've got a full name and a username. This is sort of the full name of your Facebook page. Later, we can see the username. And the full name does not need to be unique. I can create a brand new company called San Diego Gas and Electric. And it'll let me even though there's already an S, D, G, and E. So on the next screen, I will choose the unique username that only one person can have. Only one business can have. There's various rules that you would need to follow when you're using a Facebook account. You can read those on the terms or in the help screen. Get started. And then I have four items to, to fill out. Again, a lot of what we do on social media on one network overlaps with many other social networks. So what I, whatever I said over for the Twitter profile setup also applies here. And what I said there was you have some amount of space, in this case 155 characters, to put a few complete sentences about what your business is. If you've got a business that is very prosaic, its name is prosaic, such as PMD Interactive. Well, what does that company do? You will definitely use the description to explain what that company does. If the name of your business is not obvious what it does, definitely use the description or the biography, the about information to explain what it is. Victor's Bakery, it's pretty obvious what I do. It's something about baked goods. So I would take advantage to use this spot to write a couple of sentences of keywords of what people may search for. San Diego based bakery. Let me try a little different. Family friendly bakery in the heart of Chula Vista, California. We specialize in healthier fare. And then I have 58 more characters to write something, which you should. Website, if you've got any other website, you can put the link there. So if you want to cross promote back with Twitter, you can put that link or your main website. 
and then you get the Facebook custom URL, the username. Some of you might have an option to set, to set this right away and some of you may not. There seems to be various factors why you are or not allowed to choose a username. Most likely because I've used Facebook for several years and I've created various businesses. Most likely that's why it lets me create one quickly. If it's not letting you create a username, oftentimes you're going to need between 25 and 30 likes to your page before Facebook believes this is a legitimate business, let's allow them to choose a username. So if it's not letting you choose a username early on, think about that. You need to get likes, also known as followers. So what we talked about in the Twitter lesson will apply here as well, with some variation that we'll get to. For this testing account, I will not put a username. I don't want to take a unique name away from someone else. It's just a testing account. But I would probably fill that in if I were you, if this were your real account. Save. And then a picture. I want to put a picture as soon as possible about my business. Because like Twitter and every other network, if I want to be taken seriously that I am a legitimate business, I need to have... Um, set up my branding. So I would add a picture, I would upload the graphic and it will then brand me a little bit better that I'm not a fake account. You have the limitation again of a square graphic, pretty much like Twitter. Every other network has some sort of square or rounded square or circular graphic. So if your logo is tall or wide, most likely it'll be cropped. And you don't have much choice in how to set that crop, so be careful. Next. You may choose to add your page on your favorites. When you're on your home screen, favorites will be at the left. And if you quickly want to jump over to managing your business, you can add it to your favorites. I personally like to select it by going up to the black triangle and clicking on the, on the page. or manage pages. So for me, I'll skip it. But you can add it to your favorites at left if you want to get to it quicker. I then have a preferred page audience. You can get back to this screen in a different way if you're not creating an account. It's just going to be in the settings that we'll look at later. Facebook says, tell us about the people you'd most like to connect with. Anyone can find your page, but we'll do our best to put it in front of the people who matter to you most. So I would definitely think about targeting your company on Facebook to the right people. This is one of the reasons why Facebook is so effective nowadays. It can be targeted to the right people. That billboard that's on the sidewalk targets a certain audience, but it's very random that that audience will actually see that billboard. Here with Facebook and other features that we will see, we will be able to show our content right to the people that would care the most. So I can set a location. This is very cool. Everyone in a location, people who live here, people who recently were in this location, people that are traveling. So let's say I'm targeting San Diego. So I'm going to get that environment, which then I can increase or decrease the radius, include or exclude other locations. What's the age range that I'm trying to reach on my Facebook? Now we can go all the way as young as 13 and 65 and up. And it's a good idea to target here to really think about who would care about your product. So simply by putting everyone, 13 to 65, that's not so good because in the real world, a company of the real world is trying to reach an audience that is specific. All good companies that know they need to reach an audience do better. So if I'm saying I want to reach everyone, then I'm not really reaching anyone. So the more specific that I can be here, the better. So just in case, I'm going to say I'm going to be targeting... 30 years and up. I'm going to say that the people under 30 years old probably won't have the, I don't know, the income that I desire for them to visit my business to purchase my expensive cupcakes. Am I targeting everyone or specifying a gender? If it makes sense, you can specify a gender. If not, all works well. Let me get back to interest in a moment. Languages. 
So if you're targeting a language that is not a common language in the area that I'm targeting, I would need to specify it. In the San Diego, in the San Diego area, English and Spanish are very common. So Japanese is a little less common. So I might want to specify that language. Interests. As people use Facebook all day long, they are telling Facebook what they're interested in, either explicitly by clicking like on something or by simply writing about something, sharing about something. They're showing interest to Facebook. So what I can do first, I would recommend select browse so that you get these various topics. 1.198 billion people have it showed some interest in food and drink. If I open food and drink, I can then specify maybe baking, a different type of cooking. There we go, baking, 279 million. Now obviously 279 million is less than 1 billion, but that's a good amount of specificity. I'm gonna add baking. And then after this, it may be giving me other suggestions based on baking. We've got frying, barbecue, flavor, recipes, Thai. Okay, well, maybe I can think about it in terms of this. People that are really into the Food Network. There we go. Food Network UK, Food Network, Food Network TV Star TV Show, Food Network, 49 million there. So I can add around three to five interests. Not too many, because then you're too specific, perhaps. So at this point, I set up my target audience, my preferred audience, and I'll save. We have a brand new page then that's pretty empty. You'll want to take the moment to add a cover. There's your graphic for your company. I never added a username, which was the Facebook address, but you may want to. I have add a button, which is a call to action. Adding a button to my page will allow me to create an action right away when people visit my site. So for example, I want a call now button to be visible right away. So if I had a real phone number to share here, I would add it and then I would get a button that people would see right away that they can call me. And I have various other actions. So I would recommend you look at them because many of them could be very useful for your business, such as shop now. We'll take a quick tour of the anatomy of Facebook because a lot of, ex a lot of people already have that experience. But I'll, I'll give a basic uh, anatomy lesson of Facebook and then we will get pretty advanced pretty quickly. Page is the home screen where you see the content of your page right away messages you will be able to have an inbox and private messages with people you can set away responders with the response assistant at meaning that you will automatically reply to people this screen is very useful for doing customer service Notifications will let you know of any activities such as likes on your content and shares, etc. You also have an option here to start inviting your friends and family to like this page. So if you need to build 25 to 30 likes in order to claim a username, if it's not letting you, you may want to think about inviting your friends and family to like your page. Maybe they'll do it as a pity like, but then that'll give you enough clout to then be able to claim the name. Insights at the moment is a pretty barren screen, but this is a very powerful and perhaps one of the most useful screens in all of Facebook for a business. Plain old people don't have this, insights, which is to check how well is my content doing. I post a picture or a video or a link, etc. And are people looking at it? Are people reacting to it? Are people sharing it, etc. I have nothing to look at on this screen yet. But as you use Facebook, look at this screen on a regular basis, weekly, for example, so that you can then decide what am I doing well and what am I doing wrong on Facebook to make decisions. Publishing tools is a location where you can see everything that you've published, 
posts that you've scheduled and other things. What's cool about Facebook compared to Twitter, for example, is that we are able to schedule posts on Facebook pretty easily. We have a way to do it on Twitter, but that's called TweetDeck, which we didn't get a chance to talk about in the Twitter lecture. So if you're interested, go to tweetdeck.twitter.com. And the point of that is like, you'll have a feature like Facebook in that you can schedule a post to be published. If our goal is that once a week, we're going to share something new to all of our networks, then that means I need to think of content to add to Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, etc. Instead of being chained to the computer weekly, where I have to share something on Facebook, I can take the weekend and think of five different things and then schedule them that something comes out this week, something comes out next week, something comes out the following week automatically. I'll be able to see those scheduled posts here and change them, move them up in time and so forth. If I started to post but I didn't finish, I see drafts. And expiring posts are pretty new. It used to be that if you were a business and you posted on Facebook that said, sale this Saturday, use coupon code 129. It used to be then that you needed to remember to remove that post on Monday or else people a month later could come back to that post and think, well, where's this sale? I see, a, I see an ad on, on, on Facebook here. I see a post on Facebook that says sale this Saturday and they didn't pay attention that that Saturday was a month ago and they'll still try to claim the coupon or claim the deal. Well, with expiring posts, you can set a timeline of when the post will automatically unpublish itself so that that doesn't happen. And you'll be able to repost or reactivate any of these expired posts in the future. As video becomes more important, we can keep track of all our videos in Facebook here. You can create forms and canvas elements, which are just other ways to reach an audience. Next, we've got settings. This is a big screen that'll go into detail in a moment and help. So if we need to get in touch with someone to help us on Facebook, there's help. Let's take a deep dive into the settings of Facebook. This is very valuable to look at first before getting started. So there are many settings in Facebook, like most social networks. I won't cover every single setting, but I will mention some that I think are pretty valuable for a business. There's an option of page visibility where you can turn off the visibility of your page, sort of like unpublishing it, putting it into draft mode. Your whole page then disappears from Facebook temporarily. It may be useful to do that if you're going to make big updates. Visitor posts. One of the reasons that Facebook is very popular is because it allows you to control your message on social media a lot better than other platforms. On Twitter, you can tweet and start hashtags and trends and such, but those hashtags may get away from you. They may be co-opted by other people. They may be flooded by spam and so forth. Well, on Facebook, the default is that people have the ability to share what they want on your page. Well, that could be a recipe for disaster if people are writing spam and off-topic content on your page. The default here, anyone can publish to the page. Anyone can add photos and videos to the page. So all your legitimate customers could add their piece to your website. If you edit, you have the options of, uh, no, disable posts by other people on the page. That's one way to keep your page from being overrun by spam and other problems. The downside with that is, like Twitter, that are you going to run your social media as a monologue or as a dialogue? And as I've said previously, a monologue is that you, the company, are talking at your customers without really doing much follow-up or allowing them to get in touch with you without much follow-up. That's the monologue. I would recommend the dialogue. And when my company is hired to do social media for clients, we often insist on them running it as a dialogue. We, that is, 
do the dialogue for them, meaning that we reply to customers, we ask questions, we do follow-ups, we, we do thank yous and all of that. So I would recommend to keep it on allow visitors to the page to publish posts. Keep it open, keep it public, keep it a dialogue. However, make sure you activate review posts by other people before they're published to the page. So this is moderation. You're moderating the content, the comments that are being added to your page. So whatever crazy person wrote a crazy thing, you don't have to show it on your page if you don't allow it. You could have deleted it also after the fact without activating this button. But if instead you become a moderator to your own content, you will let the best content through. There's no negative for you to take control of your own content and allow the conversation to flow as you feel is best. You cannot do that on Twitter. You cannot delete anyone's tweet. You cannot remove your hashtag from their tweet. Twitter is very, very open for better or for worse. Facebook allows you to control the message for better or for worse. So that's the one I would recommend, Activate Review. And you will see those posts that are being moderated in your publishing tools screen. Would you like people to review your business? Yes or no? There's that option. You can choose that if you'd like. One reason why you may want to turn that on is because review sites are very important nowadays for building an audience, for improving your search rankings, for creating an entity that gets customers. The problem, of course, is, is that you can get negative reviews. And the problem with that is that you can't control those. So if some give, someone gives you a one star rating and tells you that they found a tooth in that cupcake, well, you chose to get reviews and that one is either yes or no. You have the ability to, to target or to narrow the potential audience of posts on your feed, on your home timeline. The default is that it's off. If you turn it on, when you create a post, you can choose which people see it. You also have the option to see who sees it after the fact that it's been posted. If you never turn this on, anyone would be able to see it. But if you turn it on, you'll be able to have the right people see it because a good, successful company knows that they're going to target an audience that would care most about their product. Coca-Cola is not trying to reach the health food crowd. Coca-Cola might taste great, but it's full of sugar, and it's high fructose corn syrup, and benzatine phosphorite, or whatever, that perhaps the health food crowd might not want to drink. So Coca-Cola knows to target their uh, product to the right people, and you should know that as well for your own content. So that's a good one to turn on. Do you want private messages sent to you via Facebook? Again, that's part of the dialogue. I do recommend to use that one. Tagging ability, both of these about tagging ability and other taggings. Um, that's again about the monologue and the dialogue. Uh, you will be able to approve these things but that keeps the dialogue going if you have them active. You can do country and age restrictions. Who do you target or who do you exclude? Can you do page moderation? Can you block certain words or can you turn on a profanity filter? Those are a couple of options to think about. That's completely up to you. Are you going to write your posts in multiple languages? I can activate this feature and I can share posts in English and Spanish and Japanese. Now it's not that Facebook will translate those posts into the different languages, is that you have the ability to fill in the English version, the Japanese version, the Japanese version, the Spanish version, etc. If you've created more than one page accidentally, perhaps, if someone else was helping you to create a page, you may have duplicates, which you can merge right here. And if you want to remove this page, there's the Remove button. So again, I won't mention every single option. Many of them are straightforward. There's always a little Help button right there. 
And that's just the general items. Looking at messaging, the defaults that are listed here are fine, but if you want to change a few things, this relates to if someone private messages your business, if you have that active, how will you deal with them? If you click Edit Page, you can change a little bit of the look of your Facebook page, nothing crazy, but you can change the tabs and such, what do people see, and you can rearrange these. Maybe you want videos to be the very first thing that people see. Post Attribution. This is what keeps Victor Campos visible from Victor's Bakery. So again, I recommend on your personal account to create many business pages as you need, and you will see that the attribution should automatically be set that Victor's Bakery is the one posting to Victor's Bakery as the administrator, not Victor Campos posting as the administrator to Victor's Bakery. Notifications. Would you like to get notified of various things that happen throughout Facebook? And how would you like to get notified? Maybe if you turn off email, that might be good because you would be getting a lot of things in your inbox. For me personally, I turn off email and text messages because I just sign in and get the work done on the website and then sign out. I don't need an inbox full of notifications or my phone constantly telling me via text. Page roles is the screen where I can add more than one person to help me manage my Facebook. So, so if I want other people to help me manage this page, I can set them to different roles. From top to bottom, you get an explanation here what these do. If you set them to the administrator, they have the most control, meaning they can actually also remove you from your own page. So most of the time you'll be adding other people as an editor and you have down to the different levels. Under people and other pages, you will get a list of the people that have liked your page, the people that have become fans of you, have followed you on Facebook. You've got preferred page audience. This is the screen that you can set that if you, who are you going to target the screen that you would see when you first set up Facebook. I do see sometimes that people don't have this preferred page audience option. And I don't think there's much I can say about that. It may be that you've got an old version of a Facebook page. You may be able to get that fixed if you go over to the help, to Facebook help. Apps are various other features that you can add to Facebook. That's out of our scope here. You can explore that on your own. Partner apps and services. This is something that's very new, such as the ability to book appointments and get quotes and such. You would need to add a service and jump through the steps about how that works with a third party partner app. Next, you have Instagram ads. Now, Instagram is one of the networks that's also very popular. It was uh, made public a few years ago, and it was growing and growing and growing. Instagram, of course, is the photo sharing network. It managed to become very popular because of its aesthetic. That is square graphics with a filter. Later on, it added video, short video, and it's becoming very popular. Facebook saw the usefulness of Instagram and they bought Instagram. Facebook paid, I believe, around a billion dollars uh, to purchase Instagram a few years ago. And so there hasn't been much of a change to Instagram after the parent company of Facebook took over until very recently the ability to place ads on f Instagram via Facebook. Now, Instagram is doing very well. It's grown um, o over 500 million users. It's actually surpassed the number of users that Twitter has. So the integration of Instagram and Facebook seems to have worked very well to build a user base. 
We won't have time to talk about how Instagram integrates with Facebook, but that's something you can explore on your own. You can feature various bits of content on your Facebook page, such as the other pages that you have liked, that Victor's Bakery has liked, and also who are the people, who are the page owners behind this page. Cross-posting. Honestly, I need to educate myself more about this, so I don't have too much to say, but it seems to be a way to easily share one video to your multiple Facebook pages, other pages that have added each other or liked each other. You have a support inbox in case you've been in touch with Facebook tech support. And then you've got the activity log, which is another screen for you to see all of the content that you've been adding to your page, focused on, for example, photo information, questions, etc. Next up, we have more settings that are valuable for you to look at for your Facebook page. These are over at the About screen here. There's a tab on the left side, About. These are some of the most important settings. They're all about your business, and they're all pretty much empty. So you'll have to take a moment to fill these all in. They're pretty straightforward. Here's where you can change the category if you put it in the wrong one. The name of your Facebook page as it appears on Facebook can be edited there. The username, the address on Facebook can be edited there as well. Topics. Choose three words to describe your page. Now, in various spots like this where you fill in biographies and keywords and such, it's important to fill these in, yes, but it's more important to create the content on a regular basis where you can be found on the social network. But it's most important to be posting content on a regular basis. So some keywords here. Baking. You might get results that are relevant to your business or a lot of them that are not really that related. So if any of these fit, you can select them. There's a start date and a founded date. Um, either of those that you set up might be useful to build this history of your site. There's a spot for an address. Note, if you add a valid address, people will be able to see and check into your page using Facebook Places. If you don't have a physical location, you wouldn't fill this in. If you do have a physical location, people will be able to find you on a map in Facebook and also to check in, meaning that they can let their friends and family know that they've gone to your business. What are the hours of operation if they apply? Here's the short description I wrote previously, and I can further change it. The long description gives me even more space to write even more about my business. But again, you could spend the time to write a couple of paragraphs about your business. But what's going to be more valuable is the weekly posting you're going to make, the, the daily interaction that you're going to create. So this is good to fill out, but the content that you create is better. Impressum is not necessary unless you're in one of these countries. The Impressum basically is to let people know who is behind this business. This is most likely in order for disclosing political ties and such. And notice it's only required in Austria, Germany, and Switzerland. There's a spot for you to write a mission statement. So if you've got a marketing plan, you would enter your mission statement. That is, what is the goal? What is the mission of your business? Are there any awards that are relevant? Are there products you can enter? Notice this is just a simple list of products, not a complex catalog system. Is there a phone number for people to call you? An email address for them to contact you at? And a website that you have? Official page, you most likely don't need to worry about this because this is more for people that are making a Facebook page for an entity that they don't own. 
they are making, let's say, yet another Justin Bieber website. So they would enter the official brand, celebrity, or organization. You are your own official entity, so you don't need to fill that in. If I go back to the home screen, then I have the ability to share content just like any other social network. I can share a basic status update, which is text. You can also attach a link and Facebook will create a nice thumbnail of it. So this is off topic, but if I were writing, uh, check out our course online, I paste in the link. Facebook will then create a thumbnail, a little bit of a caption, which you can edit, and then a link back to the originator. I can also attach photo and video. I have a lot of options here. Upload a photo or a video, create an album of photos, create a photo carousel, which is a scrolling photo album with a link, a slideshow, three to 10 photos that create a simple video with a little sound if you'd like, and canvas. So this is a more immersive story which combines images and video. So there's different ways to share here. The goal as a beginner then that I would give you is to share at least one of these types to get acclimated with how they all work. As you share these different photo and video types, you will then check your, your insights screen to see which of them was more effective, which of them had the most reach and the most interactions like clicks and such. As I said on the Twitter lessons, I can't lecture on what you need to share. I can lecture on how to share and such, but what to share? I can't really lecture that to a whole class with many different types of businesses and content. So that's why it's up to you to try different things. That's up to you to check your peers, to check the Facebook pages of competitors, of ancillary competition, and see what they're sharing. How are they sharing? Just as an example, I'm going to go check out Panera Bread. Not the same sort of bakery, but let's check out what they're doing. They have, of course, a picture at the top that draws attention to their food. There's a call now button. They have reviews. Reviews are becoming much more important for businesses because why would I waste my time with a business that has a low star rating? 4.4 rating is pretty good. So then I'm seeing the content. Tomato soup is just about the same color as the leaves on the ground. Well, not in San Diego. But that uh, is a nice photo. That's not an extremely complicated photo for me to take. I just need to stand over someone's shoulder and take a photo of the product. And it's got 591 reactions, 43 comments, and 23 shares. Again, this photo is not extremely complex. It's just a square photo, various products on the table. Take a photo and reactions. Another sort of over-the-shoulder shot that I could accomplish. Notice it's not only photos, but here's Thanksgiving reflections from our founder and CEO, Ron Sheikh. So get inspired to share different content by the businesses you follow. Other things that you can share are events and milestones. Now this often depends on various factors about what you have here as an option to share. Sometimes you might also see offers. Creating an event is a pretty involved item to share because you have to set something up for people that will visit either in a real location or in a virtual location. You can include ticket sales and many other options. This is one of the more complex ones. A milestone is a type of a share that stands out from the rest because it highlights an accomplishment. You can write a note, which is Facebook's way of allowing you to write blog posts. 
So you can do a little styling in that you add a graphic at the top, a title, and you write some text. And this will also allow you to do some styling like bold and bullet points and that sort of thing. You're able to select this text and again also do a little bit of styling and inserting images and that sort of thing. So it's a blog post. And Facebook is always going to encourage you to reach more of an audience, to keep it up, to keep coming back, to try new things. You may be getting page tips that further help you improve. So at this point, I'll shift gears because we need to talk about Facebook in a much more serious way. We can share a variety of content. We can recommend our page to friends and family. We can engage in search similar to Twitter so that we can find potential customers. But let me be blunt. Facebook is the 800 pound gorilla. And what it says goes. What I mean by that is that Facebook constantly changes the rules of its system. And so we need to know those rules and abide by them to succeed. Nowadays, Facebook makes it harder for a business to reach its intended audience. It used to be that giving a page a like meant, like a follow, I want to see what that business is posting. When I, Victor, go to my home screen, I want to see the content of those businesses I chose to follow. Now Facebook believes people want to see the content of the people they are connected with. So we will not be showing the content of businesses as easily as before. So on the one hand, as a user, that might be very nice. I don't want to see the content of businesses. I want to see the content of my friends and family. But as a business, suddenly you've got the rug pulled out from under you. Those 200 likes that I may have doesn't mean anymore that those 200 people will see my content. It used to be that those 200 people would see your content because they chose to follow you. Now it's a much lower percentage. I don't know the percentage. I don't know if, if Facebook releases that publicly. I, I doubt it. But I wouldn't be surprised if it's 1%, 10% of followers see the content. So out of those... Um, 200 followers that you have conservatively, then that would be two people that see your, your posts a little bit more liberally, 10%. Well, that's still 20 people out of 200. So what are we to do? If Facebook is actively preventing businesses from reaching people, there must be a way to reach them. There is. Promote. Facebook will let you reach more people more effectively through its various promotion tools. Promotion is another word for ads. Via Facebook ads, you will be able to reach more people. And yes, it sounds very cynical and it's hard not to be, but pretty convenient that you're not able to reach enough people on Facebook unless you pay Facebook to reach more people. That's just the way it is. When I work with clients to run social media, this is a conversation we have early on, and we say to get the best out of Facebook, to get the most effective reach of customers on Facebook, you need to pay. The good news is that you'll be able to pay as little as $1 to reach 100 times the people you could have reached with zero followers. And there's various ways to pay to reach the followers. So you may see a button that says promote and there are various uh, tactics here. I'm gonna look at one that is often the, a very effective one to, to start off as a beginner. That is boosting a post. As I begin to create a post, I have the option to publish it directly or to boost the post. Boost your post to reach more people. So if I have zero followers, this is a good investment. I'll be able to reach people that don't know I exist. If I have a few followers already, it's still good because then I'll reach more of those that really chose to follow me 
on top of more that don't know I exist yet. The way I would boost a post is write your post first and publish it, then go through the boost process. Because I've found that as you're crafting a post and then go off to boost a post, there's a completely different screen that if you get out of that screen, you may lose what you're about to post. So I'm going to post something instead first and then boost it. Visit our storefront this Saturday for 25% off all cupcakes. Bring a friend to save even more. Maybe I'll add a picture to that. And then I'll go ahead and publish as normal. Facebook was pretty smart in my case right now, understanding that I might be talking about an offer. As I said, we have different posting types. Sometimes you get the offer type. In this case, this might work as an offer. And what an offer is, it's free. Offers are free. They need some setup, as in, are you offering this online or in store? You fill in the details about where do you get the item if it's online or in store? Are you going to give a percentage off, an amount off, buy one, get one free, etc.? Free stuff. What's the value of the percentage off? What's the title of this? A description as I've added and some pictures. When does it expire? And what's the actual code? So this is really nice. It's up to you to decide, however, if you're giving away your food and such. I'm going to say, at the moment, however, not now. I was trying to boost it, and offers are not boosting. Offers are free. Offers are cool, and they work. But it does have to be something that you figure out about what are you giving away. For the moment, I'll say not now. This is made as a regular post. And now I have the option to boost. So I would post first and then boost. You can boost most of your content so that it reaches more of an audience. Let's talk about the process of boosting a post. Your post will reach more people on their desktop newsfeed or their mobile newsfeed. And what you're doing here is telling Facebook, I want to pay X amount of money to reach X amount of people. You have the ability to choose people in demographic groups and set a budget. So I've done this before. I have various examples of demographics, of audiences. Let's say I, would to, I were to edit that. To start off with, because you may not have a great sense of who would be most interested about your product, it's a good idea to start off general, to boost your content to a general audience, not too general. And then after you check your insights, you'll start to gain better knowledge about who should you then focus on. At the moment, I would say an audience of all genders, certain ages, um, 20 and up, location US, and interest in cooking channel. Not too specific. I'll save that. So those are the ones I'm going to target. My budget. Facebook is saying with a $20 budget, you could reach potentially 1,500 to 4,000 people. Now that does not mean you're going to get 1,500 sales out of this ad. This means it will reach 1,500 to 4,000 people. This is only an estimate. Numbers shown are based on the average performance of ads targeted to your selected audience. So as I choose different audiences, I may get different numbers. As I be more specific or be more general, I'll get different numbers. So we can set our budget to a variety of prices, $20 and higher. Facebook will gladly accept a $1,500 ad purchase to reach 89,000 people. 
And if you choose your own price, you can go down to $1. Even with $1, I can reach about 110 to 280 people. With zero followers, that's great. In theory, I am reaching 100 to 300 people that are most interested in my product. Those people don't know I exist on Facebook yet, but by paying as little as a dollar, they will at least know I exist. And again, that does not mean you're about to make 110 to 280 sales. Just like that flyer put on someone's windshield doesn't mean they're going to pay. Just like that radio ad they heard doesn't mean they're going to call. Just like that billboard that they drove by doesn't mean they're going to invest. It's still up to you to have a great picture and text and product and offer. Facebook will do its best to show your content to the right people. But if your content isn't that great, you won't get as much of a result as you'd like. You can run it for 1, 7, 14 or more days if I choose. Okay, 14 days. Well, now I need at least $14 so that Facebook spends $1 per day for two weeks trying to reach an audience. And now I've got 1,200 to 3,000 people that I could be reaching. You then set up a payment option. So you're gonna use real money to buy virtual ads to get real results. So I'm trying to get people to come to my physical location, my storefront this Saturday to get 25% off, bring a friend. So I'm trying to just bring people to my physical location, but I'm paying Facebook to reach an audience of locals that are interested in cooking and baking and, and uh, treats and all of that and getting them to my store where then it's still up to me and my sales crew to actually sell those baked goods. And this is the way of Facebook now. This is the way of the largest social network. Because the great thing about Facebook is that there's so many people on Facebook that you can reach. The bad thing about Facebook is there's so many people on Facebook that you could try to reach. Facebook is a double-edged sword. There's lots of people that you could reach, but perhaps there's too many people. You're a needle in a haystack. You're yet another bakery in a location. So Facebook ads are a way for you to reach an audience. And I can tell you anecdotally, and you can also look up stats from many other places, that boosting your posts, paying Facebook to reach more people works. You just have to get over perhaps your initial shock of, I've got to pay to use Facebook? I thought that was just an urban legend, a myth. Well, Facebook has been charging people to use Facebook for a while now. Actually, Facebook has been charging businesses to use Facebook for a while now. Facebook is not going to charge people to use Facebook, no matter how many times you get that email forwarded from, from Aunt Gertrude. Facebook is not going to charge regular people to use Facebook. Facebook makes its money from businesses purchasing ads to show to people. Then people may or may not click. Facebook made money anyway, and you make money you may make money as well if you reach the right audience. So I would highly recommend for you to invest in boosting your posts. $14. That is very attainable. That's a few lattes right there. Hold off on that coffee for a bit to instead invest in some ads to reach an audience on Facebook. And yes, the more you pay, the more you reach. And the more you reach could be the more possibility of actual sales. Give it a shot with a small amount of money. $1, $5, $20. Put that into your budget. Once a month, I'm going to spend $20 on Facebook ads. Sounds too much? Okay. Um, once a month, I'm going to spend $5 on Facebook ads. And you're going to see you're going to get more traffic. And then the traffic could lead to more ultimate conversions, sales, and so forth. Calls to your business, etc. I won't boost this. I've got a credit card ready to go. That's your goal to think about, to start boosting. Facebook has many other ways to promote the business, as we, as we saw here. Get more website visitors, promote your page, share with friends. You can go explore these on your own, and they're all very related. You set a budget, you set an audience. 
you create good content and Facebook will try to guide people to reach that ultimate goal. Up on the black triangle at the top right, you also have a dedicated manage ads and create ads screen. If you click on create ads, you get many more types of actions. Awareness, consideration, conversion. Hey, that's the ultimate goal that I have. But perhaps you won't get to conversions until you build awareness. People need to know you exist. Okay, they know you exist, but then they need to consider why would this bakery be better than the other bakery's ad that I saw. Once you've got consideration, then it's time to get conversions. It's time to get those sales, visits to your location, and so forth. So this is a very powerful screen. It's a bit out of our scope, the scope of our class. But I think you're going to be very well off if you think about first starting off with boosting your posts. And that's simply creating great content and boosting it, setting a budget and a target audience, checking your results in the insights, adjusting, and keep working at it. We have the ability to boost tweets on Twitter as well. You can go to ads.twitter.com, ads, ads ads.twitter.com, and see how you boost tweets. Again, you set a budget, you target an audience, and your tweets are visible by the right people. Facebook has it, Twitter has it, Pinterest, Instagram. It's the modern way of marketing. And you'll be able to go pretty far with free tactics on most of the networks except Facebook because they've set it up that boosting and paying is really going to be the best way. And if you're going to play in their playground, you're going to follow their rules. And if you do, you can have great results. So in the next video, we'll start to talk about another very big social network, YouTube. You may not have thought about it as a social network, but YouTube has all the same interactions and features as pretty much every other network, but it focuses on video. So come back next time, and we'll talk all about YouTube. This has been Victor Campos.